We are now in a position to calculate some of the very basic statistical quantities that people might want to know about their data. So here is a list of some of the functions that we are going to use. Length, which is the number of counts that, of observations in a vector. Mean, which it provides the average. Standard deviation. And then a function called summary, which gives us a summary of a number of statistical quantities at once. We can also calculate quantiles, either the normal uh, quartiles or any other quantiles you want to specify. You'll notice here that on some case, in some cases, we have problems with these functions if there are NAs on these three, whereas these two don't really care whether we have NAs or not. I've created another data set that contains some heights of people in it. And in order to see what's going on, let's just go ahead and read it in from the internet. We can see that this is a table with two columns. So the first column in the data frame uh, divides the data values up into two categories, men and women. The right side um, is the height in centimeters of those people. We will not pay attention to the men and women categories until later. Let's go ahead and run the calculation on these data. So if we calculate the length, it tells us there are 14 data points. The average is 175 centimeters. The standard deviation is seven centimeters. And then the summary uh, gives us several things. It gives us the minimum and maximum values the median and mean values, and then it also tells us where the first and third quartile uh, divisions are in the data. If we specifically want to get uh, quantiles, um, the default is uh, quartiles, uh, giving us every 25%, but you can uh, go into the settings and change these to a di different quantiles than quartiles if you want. We have another data set that is actual real data from some Nashville schools. Let's go ahead and read that in. It's a little slower to load because it's a big data set, um, but here's what it looks like. So we can see um, that this data set has got a lot of NAs in it, and we'll take a look at the reason why in a minute. So one of the columns that we're going to look at in this data set is um, the column, which is the number of females in each school. And we can see that that column has no missing data in it. The other column we're going to look at is the number of Asian students in the school. And in that column, we can see that there are some missing data. If we perform the same statistical tests on the data from the schools, then we can see what happens. Um, as we can see, finding the mean for females is no problem. But if we try to find the mean number of Asians per school, we end up getting an NA because as we saw earlier, some schools have missing values for the number of Asian students in that school. So we can fix that problem by telling it to remove the NAs prior to calculating the average. And if we do that, then we do end up getting an average number of Asian students of 25 students per school. If I do the quantile calculation, then again, I have no problem with female. However, instead of giving me uh, an, a value of NA, it simply throws an error and says, you're not allowed to have missing values and still run this function. So again, the solution is to put na.rm equals true. And if I do that, it uh, calculates without complaining. So the behavior that we saw was that missing data caused uh, two kinds of problems. In some cases, trying to calculate on a column that had missing data did the calculation but produced not available as the result. And in other cases, it actually refused to do the analysis. One of the questions that you should ask yourself when you're looking at a data set is, does it actually make sense in a particular circumstance that, that a da data should be interpreted as missing? 
for example, if we were looking at the values in the column for first graders, for rows that have high schools, does it actually make sense to be reporting the number of first graders when there are no first graders in high school? So in that case, it's probably appropriate to say not available because high schools do not have data on first graders available. That just doesn't make any sense. On the other hand, if we report that schools have no Asian students, does it mean that school that those schools in general can't have Asian students? I think that is not true. What it means instead is that there are actually zero Asian students in that school. So in that case, the empty cells should not be empty. They should actually probably have zeros in them instead. Let's take a look at the data and see what I'm talking about. So here we see an example of Antioch High School. If we look at the values for uh, grades K through four, all the way up to grade eight, Antioch High School does not have any values and it shouldn't have any values because it's a high school, whereas the elementary schools do not have any values for grades nine through 12. So missing values make sense there. However, if we look at the Asian column, we see that most schools do have Asian students. There are a only a few that don't. And the most likely interpretation is that these particular schools are not schools that never admit Asian students. They simply have zero Asian students. So if we were, for example, to wanting to calculate the average number of Asian students per school, it would not make sense to ignore the schools that, are, that have missing values, but rather those missing values should be replaced with zeros. So one of the things we could do is to go back to our source spreadsheet and go into all any of the columns with eth ethnicity involved and just type zeros into all of the cells. Uh, that would be possible, but that would also be a lot of work. And it turns out there's a much more uh, elegant way to easily solve this problem. And we'll look at that next.